Now the kids are dismissed. We're going to be looking in Jeremiah chapter 8 in just a few minutes. I heard over the last few days that our president would not be able to give a State of the Union address because Nancy Pelosi said he would not be allowed in the House. Well, I want you to know that in this House, Nancy Pelosi has no authority whatsoever. Amen. And until the president is able to give his State of the Union, I'm going to do a little bit of it this morning and also the state of the church. First of all, I want you to know that America has a choice right now and not much time to decide what it wants. And the choice is simply this, revival or revolution. Evil is getting worse and worse in this land. We've gone beyond Baal worship of the Old Testament, way beyond it. We've gone way beyond the worship of Molech. And I don't know if anybody knows what the worship of Molech is, but it was a giant statue that they would heat till it was red hot. And it had outstretched hands on it and they would lay their newborn babies in it as sacrifice to Molech. We've gone beyond that. We've gone beyond Sodom and Gomorrah. We've allowed the demon-possessed media and Hollywood to dictate our morals to the public rather than the church doing it. And I mean demon-possessed. I'm not playing. I'm as serious as I can be. You can't do that kind of evil unless you're demon-possessed. We have a generation, and I'm talking about young and old right now, that is following this and there is no end to the evil imaginations. The days of Noah have been surpassed by the wicked imaginings of this current generation. This has become a critical situation and has made this world not only dangerous to live in, but in danger of judgment by a holy God. God has destroyed nations for way less than what we have done. Our second president, John Adams said, but a constitution of government once changed from freedom can never be restored. Liberty once lost is lost forever. He says this also, he says, posterity, you will never know how much it cost the present generation to preserve your freedom. I hope you will make good use of it. If you do not, I shall repent in heaven that I ever took half the pains to preserve it. And then he makes this statement right here, and boy was this a prophecy because it's been proven over and over again. Our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other, and he's shown that to be true. We have become a nation that has no regard for morals whatsoever, no restraint, no guidance. And people live today like there is no God, and matter of fact, half of them don't believe there is one. Now, we don't have men and women anymore. Oh no, we, 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 we now have dozens of new genders. A man can walk into a woman's bathroom simply because he says he feels like being a woman. I will say this, if I catch you in a bathroom that my wife is in, you're going to be a brand new gender when you come out. I don't know what it'll be called, but it won't be a man anymore. We are way past men marrying men and women marrying women. Oh no, now they say you can marry anything you want. You can marry a tree or a dog and it's acceptable. Tell me that's not demonic. America is now killing so many of their children that we are not multiplying enough to keep up with those that are dying in this country now. We are zero growth. And as a result, Americans are dwindling in population, but the Muslims are multiplying at an alarming rate wherever they go. And in a few years, the country is taken over by them because of sheer numbers, and then they get into the government. 
America's desperately trying to disarm its populace while sending billions of dollars to our sworn enemies to build weapons to kill us with. And I could go on and on. And as I look at the State of the Union, with sadness and wickedness uh, of many of our, uh, with, the, with sadness at the wickedness of many of our so-called leaders, most of them actually makes me wonder: How do we get this? How did we get like this? How did we get this way? How did we get so many wicked people in Washington to where there's only about two of them up there standing their ground anymore, Trump and Pence and maybe a handful of others? How did we get like that? Well, I need to look no further than the state of the church. Although Jeremiah writes this chapter against Jerusalem, it's still the same because we were a nation that was founded on Christian principles dedicated to God. Our constitution was written from the Bible. And so God holds us accountable. Jeremiah chapter 8 and verse 5, he says, Why then is this people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual backsliding? They hold fast to deceit. They refuse to return. I hearkened and heard, but they spoke not aright. No man repented him of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Everyone turned to his course as the horse rusheth into the battle. Our churches today are in a continual state of backsliding. Like God's holy city. We are supposed to be God's holy people. If you are the bride of Christ, if you are saved, you're supposed to be one of God's holy people. But now it's fashionable to make up your own laws and your own rules and expect God to approve of it. People imagine in their own minds what God is and what God cares about. Everyone has their own private version of Jesus and their own private beliefs of what they believe he approves of. And many have been fooled by Satan and they think it's okay. They will ignore this right here and make up their own version. And say, this is what God is saying to me. I'm afraid he's not saying anything to you if it don't match up with this right here. Yea, the stork in heaven knows her appointed times. And, and the, the turtles and the cranes and the swallow observe the time of their coming, but my people know not the judgment of God. He says here, even the animals and the creatures of God know their place and what they're supposed to do. If you want to see what a family is supposed to look at today, you can't look at people no more. I tell people to go watch the Canadian geese. That's terrible, but it's true. They make for life. They raise their children until they're fully grown and are able to fly away on their own. And when they walk, daddy is up front and mama's back here and they stay in a line and they take care of them. They fight for them. They will even give their lives for their children. They know more about family than we do. But the people, even those claiming to know God, have little clue as to what their place is. Most people, even churchgoers today, know nothing about Scripture and don't even care. But they know all about their favorite TV show. They know who was on Dancing with the Stars this week. They know all about their favorite sports team and every detail about them. But if you go up to the average church member and said, will you take your Bible and go back there and lead somebody to the Lord, they panic. They don't even know what to do. People always run into, Pastor, you lead this person to the Lord. You, come on, Pastor, you do this. You do, Why can't you do it? You need to be as skilled at leading someone to the Lord as your pastor is. Then he goes on to say, how do ye say we are wise and the law of the Lord is with us? Lo, certainly in vain made he it. The pen of the scribes is in vain. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord and what wisdom is in them. Therefore I will give their wives unto others and their fields to them that inherit them. For every one from the least even unto the greatest is given to covetousness. From the prophet even unto the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. 
For they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Even our leaders today, our pastors and our prophets and our wise men, have no wisdom at all if you turn your TV on to watch them. They've told lies and they've proclaimed peace when there is no peace and they get on the radio and the TV and the internet and they tell people lies and they won't warn them of God's wrath that is well on its way right now. They won't tell people about their sin. They won't call them to repentance. Why? Because they're afraid if they tell the truth there won't be enough people left in their stadium to cut the lights off next week. People are coming to hear a warm, fuzzy story and be patted on the back and tell you that everything is just fine. They want your admiration. They want your money. And then they'll tell you that you can have your best life now. Well, I'm sorry. I think mine doesn't pass me by. And I'm looking around at most of y'all and I sure hope to heaven this ain't your best life. Whew. What would the church fathers think of somebody grinning at them and saying, you can have your best life now? What is the lonely missionary in the jungle living in a hut? Think about that. What about the poverty-stricken prisoners in the dungeons of Red China who were put there for preaching the gospel? What will they think of that? What about the Christians being slaughtered and burned alive by ISIS and these other filthy groups because of their faith? What do they have to say about it? Is this their best life now? Tell that to the victims of Islam and communism. And then, by the way, some places don't even have roads to drive that new car that the TV preacher said that you deserve fact. They won't tell the truth. Isaiah said, were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? No, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Therefore shall they fall among them that fall in the time of their visitation. They shall be cast down, saith the Lord. I saw a, a, a picture this last week of a group of sorry, wicked, demon-possessed so-called church leaders saying that abortion is the work of God. Oh, they were up there wearing their robes and their collars and all of their trappings. I wouldn't be wearing none of all that fluffy stuff because that will make the fires of hell just a little bit hotter when they get there. Oh, the work of God they're talking about may, might be the God Molech, but not my God. Not the one that I worship. Jesus said it was better that a millstone were hung about your neck and you were drowned in the depths of the sea. That's what my God thinks about abortion. He said he hated the hands that shed innocent blood. And now in New York they were cheering and clapping and high-fiving each other because now you can kill a baby the moment before it comes out of the womb. You can kill a baby up to nine months. And some of the liberals said, oh, no, 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 read the law. Yeah, I did read the law. And I saw what some lawyers said when they read the law. And they said if the mother don't want that child and she said it's going to upset them, they can kill the child moments before it is born. And they're coming up with worse and worse laws. Vermont's falling in place and a lot of other places are doing that. But I'm here to tell you, I don't care what church leader says it's okay. I'm here to tell you that God's wrath and his judgment will be sure and it will be soon over this abomination. Amen. Jeremiah 8.13 said, I will surely consume them, saith the Lord. There shall be no grapes on the vine nor figs on the fig tree and the leaf shall fade and the things have I given them shall pass away from them. God has blessed America above every nation on this earth. 
We throw more out of our back door at night than most people have to live on. And that's a fact. We've got the finest of everything in the world. But America is getting ready to lose all those wonderful things that God has blessed us with because we have failed to use them for his glory and his praise and his work. And that's the only reason he gave us all of that. We're going to be consumed in this land if we don't repent. And yes, it is up to the church to repent. Not the man on the street, but the person sitting in the pew. That's where it starts. Then he asked the question. Sounds just like he wrote it last night. Why do we sit still? Why do we sit still? Assemble yourselves and let us enter into the defense cities and let us be silent there for the Lord our God has put us to silence and given us water of gall to drink because we have sinned against the Lord. He's calling for repentance. But we are in a time when we should be fasting, but we are feasting. We are in a time when we should be on our knees in prayer, but we look and find that half of our people were out partying all night, and that's why they're not even here. We should be so ashamed of ourselves that we hide, we should hide our faces from God in shame. Verse 15, it said, we look for peace, but no good came and for a time of health and behold, there was trouble. Everybody wants peace. But the problem is, is the church don't want to follow the Prince of Peace. As a result, their land is full of sickness. As a result, a large part of our country is hooked on drugs. And when they can't get that, they go to the street and get something worse than that. Young people are destroying their lives over it. The epidemic of drug addiction in this country has surpassed any problem just about that we've ever had. People have completely lost their minds over it. In verse 16, Jeremiah says, The snorting of his horses was heard from Dan. The whole land trembled at the sound of the neighing of the strong ones, for they are coming and have devoured the land and of all that is in it, the city and those that dwell therein. For behold, I will send serpents and cockatrices among you, which will not be charmed, and they shall bite you, saith the Lord. The enemy has overrun our country right now. Because our churches have no backbone. They are so scared they're going to offend someone. Offend someone. The Bible says that the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. And this is the most offensive book there's ever been written. You, do, you don't think it's offensive? Try quoting it on Facebook and see how that goes. I was told, I, I got blocked and I was told that what I was printing was hate speech. So I printed it again and it got by them that time. It is hate speech. It hates sin. It hates the devil. It is offensive and it needs to be offensive. People need to start getting offended and then get right. The churches cry for tolerance and diversity. And whenever you hear that, I'm going to tell you what they're asking for. The tolerance of wickedness and the diversity of sin. That's what they're calling for. Now we have enemies of this country in our Congress. Only 18 years after they blowed up the World Trade Center. Calling our president a filthy name. 18 years after they blowed up our World Trade Center. What in the world is going on? And none of the churches are saying anything. Oh, we, we can't judge. That's the biggest lie from the pits of hell that's ever been told. The Bible says to judge righteously. To read the rest of the chapter. Instead of pull something out of context. I get so mad when the liberals pull a verse out of context. So here, I'll give you one. And Judas went and hanged himself. Go and do thou likewise. <laughs> 
Yeah, you want to pull one out of context? I can pull one out of context. Read the whole thing. We are to be discerners. We are to judge righteously. And we are to speak out against the wickedness of our land. But most of the churches are silent. Our president can only work if we pray for him. And I see the writings of a lot of church members and church leaders who despise him. And they do it so badly that it is demonic. What it is that's going on, people, and a lot of, most people do not understand what the demonic power behind all of this uproar that's going on right now is the devil wants a one-world government. He wants a new world order. Majority of the leaders in this country want it badly, too. And right now, a wrench got thrown into that, and we stopped it. And now everybody is screaming bloody murder because their plans got thwarted. Do you realize? I'm just going to be honest with you. Hey, I can be political as I want to be. Take my tax exempt static. We ain't got nothing anyway. Come and get it. If Hillary Clinton was sitting in the White House, we'd be global right now. We'd have no sovereignty whatsoever in this nation. There would be no churches left in this nation. It would be an absolute total chaos. And y'all can get quiet if you want to, but I got the microphone so I can say whatever I want to. <laughs> Verse 18, when I would comfort myself against sorrow, my heart is faint in me. And now in this nation, our hearts are faint. Because we see the leaders of this nation acting in the same fashion as Hitler did of the past. Wanting total control of men's lives. Determining whether we live or die. All because we sat there and we didn't want to offend nobody. They loaded them on the trains going to Auschwitz. Because they didn't want to offend anybody. And they didn't want to rattle Hitler's cage. They turned their guns in and they marched peaceably to the boxcars. And where did that get them? Where did that get them? I feel like old Peter Muhlenberg, that pastor pulled his robe off after he read Ecclesiastes about there was a time for peace and a time for war. Pulled his robe off, he had a colonel's uniform under there and he said it's a time for war. Y'all might see that in the next week or two, I don't know. I don't think I'd be a good colonel, I'd probably have a sergeant or something like that. <laughs> All of this is happening because we don't want to offend no one. Behold the cry of the daughter of my people because of them that dwell in a far country. Is not the Lord in Zion? Is not her king in her? Why have they provoked me to anger with their graven images and their strange vanities? God's people has provoked the Lord himself by making light of his laws and laughing at his precepts. And yes, I have heard people that call themselves Christians do this. We have taken to ourselves idols. We worship men, we worship ourselves, and we worship the gods of silver and gold. And then he makes this chilling statement. And I tell it to you this morning. In verse 20, the harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. We're not seeing souls come to the altars like they used to. No one is broken and mourning over their sins and the sins of others and even the sins of this nation. Instead, people who should know better who should know better are telling other people that are living in sin, good for you, I am so happy for you. I've heard that with my own ears and I cringe every time I see them do that. All the while they're helping to send those people to hell rather than tell them the truth. For the hurt of the daughter of my people am I hurt. I am crushed and astonishment has taken hold on me. Like Jeremiah of old, we should be saying, I am hurt, I am crushed, but we have not even repented of our own sins yet. He asked the question, is there no balm in Gilead? 
Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? And I'm here to tell you this morning and those watching by TV and listening by radio, yes, there is a balm in Gilead and his name is Jesus. And he is our great physician and he alone can heal us. In 2 Chronicles 7.14, you've heard it a million times, but I'm going to preach it a million times, where he said, if my people... And he's talking about his people. His, we are his people. My people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. And I call upon the true prophets of God to converge upon the leaders of this land, both secular and spiritual, and cry mightily against this evil. We need to go outside the doors of the church, and we need to cry out against the evil that's going on. We need people standing out in front of the abortion clinics, preaching the word and praying for those people that's going in there. The only way that we're going to stop anything is by praying and getting some feet to what we say. And stand up and cry out against these sins. That's the state of the church address. The reason that our union is in so much trouble is because the church does not care. We have sat idly by and we've let this happen and that happen. When are we going to draw the line and when are we going to stand up and say no more? It stops right here. You are the only ones that have that power. You are the only ones that have that authority. And so it's time to make a stand for what is right or everything is going to wind up wrong. Let's bow for prayer.